Tahoe Hotel right at ringside Lake Tahoe Nevada awaiting the start of the 12 round scheduled heavyweight bout between Muhammad Ali and the light heavyweight champion Bob Foster Ali weighing 41 pounds more than Foster earlier tonight I had a chance to talk to the fighters let's go to those interviews the viewers can obviously see this is a unique kind of fighters dressing room actually it's one of the rooms for one of the stars who are usually performing here in the great Sahara Tahoe Hotel but tonight it's the dressing room of a hopeful man and one of the greatest light heavyweights who has ever lived the reigning champion Bob Foster who must go against a man 41 pounds heavier Muhammad Ali yet you seem curiously composed Bob well how you know me uh don't make a difference how much you weigh. I got enough power to take him out of there. And you know that he has proved susceptible to the left hook in the past, the late Sonny Banks, Henry Cooper, and of course, Frazier. That's right, Howard. You know, uh, a lot of people, you know, they always talk about how good, how good I can hit with a left hook. So, you know, I'm not guys out with right hands, too, you know. That's true, but the left hook that did away with Tiger was, I think, one of the cleanest, most beautiful I've ever seen. For that matter, it was the same blow that did away with young Mike Quarry. That's right. That's right. I, I just had, uh, had a guy set up to hit him with a left hook, you know. Ali's taunting, the usual thing before every bout. Has it gotten to you at all, Bob? No, I think I've gotten to him more, you know, because uh, he knew that it didn't bother me. On the other side of the coin, he has to have confidence because of the, what Frazier did to you. Well, that's right, but see, he can, uh, he's not a Frazier fighter. What do you mean by that? In other words, he's not as conditioned as Frazier, he's not as powerful as Frazier, and he don't put the pressure on you like Frazier do. Would you say bluntly that Ali is a shell of what he was five years ago before he had to lay off three and a half years? Well, I couldn't say that, Howard. Just that he's, just, he's just not the type of fighter that Joe Frazier is. As you can see, a terribly nervous, disturbed Muhammad Ali in his dressing room awaits the call to the fray. I don't think I've ever seen you this shaken up, Muhammad. Well, I'm a little nervous because Foster's got a hard left hook. And I've been knocked down with left hooks from Joe Frazier, Henry Cooper, Sonny Banks up coming to my career in the garden. And Alan Hudson, those 60 Olympics, and I've been catching him in the gymnasium. He's a better left hook than all of them. So I'm naturally I'm a little nervous. I'm nervous before all the events. But what counts is I come through. There's been a lot of talk about the altitude here. We're 6,200 feet above sea level. Foster is accustomed to high altitude. He lives in it, has worked out in it. You've been taking oxygen after meeting your sparring partners. Well, I tell you, Coast Sail, I've been taking oxygen because I needed the oxygen. What you will see is I won't need the oxygen tonight. I'm ready. And your prediction is? Round five. It was eight. But he kept talking jive, so I cut it to five. Bill Cosby also predicted that I'm going in five. So I want Bill Cosby to know that I'm going to get Foster in five. Altitude is a thing to be concerned about tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We are 6,200 feet above sea level, and you can get drowsy and dizzy just by walking a flight of stairs. The bell for round one. Foster lives in high altitude country, 5,600 feet. He's used to it. Ali was getting oxygen after sparring with his sparring mates in his training out here. So we'll watch for any effects. Ali with the long left, his usual tactic, the steady movement on his toes. Foster will fight his fight, looking to get that left in there, quickly, sneakily, the way he can. to the first round. Ali dancing, keeping his distance and flicking with the left as you just saw. Sticking and moving, that'll be his tactic. There it is again, and again. Oh, 
Foster is actually a half inch taller than Muhammad. We're a minute 45 into round one. And so far it's been the flicking left of Ali as Bob is looking for his opening, but has really not connected at all in the first round. Ali in the white trunks, Foster in the blue velvet trunks with white trim. Black trim on Ali's trunks. you may be hearing in the background is the incorrigible Drew Brown Bundini, assistant handler of Ali, screaming, stick him, he knows you're the boss. Less than 15 seconds to go in round one, clearly dominated by Muhammad Ali with the left. Don't stop there. First round. He's an overwhelming underdog, but this man can punch, and he must be taken seriously, if only because of his greatness in his own division. We're in round two, the early seconds. Ali in the white trunks, Foster in the blue. So far as we watch Ali using the left and Foster looking, trying to use his left, but not getting through Ali's gloves. Well, got in a couple of light ones to the chest there, Foster did. What you must not do is drop that right against Foster's left. Give him an opening and in the nearest of split seconds, he can connect and put you away. Dick Tiger knows all about it. We don't include Mike Quarry because against Quarry, it was a man fighting a boy, a mismatch. So far, there's not a mark on Bob Foster's face from all of the lefts Ali has thrown. Minute left in round two. In the old days, Ali's punches turned at the moment of impact, and he used to quickly produce cuts in the opponent. Don't see as much evidence of that in the current Ali. Thirty seconds left in the second round. West. Oh, got in a right there, but not as strongly as it might have looked to the viewers at home. Foster's eyes, however, are beginning to puff. Those lefts are taking hold now with less than 10 seconds left in round two. The bell for the start of round three. Howard Cosell reporting from ringside, Ali in the white trunks, Bob Foster in the blue, 
First two rounds, a succession of left-handed flicking jabs by Muhammad Ali that caused both of Foster's eyes to run water and puffing to begin. Both rounds dominated by Ali. Caution, we've seen Foster fight before. While we don't want to pretend that Ali is anything but an overwhelming favorite, we respect Foster, having seen him through the years and knowing what his punching power is, how suddenly he can strike even against a man 41 pounds heavy. However, when you're fighting a man 41 pounds heavier, he begins to wear on you. from Ali's corner as you can perhaps hear don't play champ I'm not sure that Ali is playing at all Ali knows what he's about in every fight he fights despite all of the bluster he fights a cautious fight not a gambling fight even when he drops his hands to his side his tactic here clearly is to wear Foster down with the left hook with a superior size and strength He's not going to risk leaving himself open for the Foster blow. A little more than a minute left in round three, and Angie Dundee in Ali's corner isn't happy with the way Ali is performing. through some of his play acting. He hasn't differed with Foster really from any other fighter before the fight, except for Patterson, to whom he was very kind before their last set to. Ali is landing, as you can see, one quick blow after another, each of the jab variety. Less than a half minute to go in round three. has to be taking an awful toll on Bob Foster. He is so much lighter. Less than 10 seconds in round three, and Ali beating a steady tattoo of jabs, not powerful blows, on Foster. The bell for round four, Ali against Bob Foster. Ali in the white trunks, Foster in the blue. For those of you who may have just joined us, the first three rounds clearly dominated by Muhammad Ali. No powerful blows struck, no staggering of Foster, but a steady succession of lefts in the first two rounds, and then in the third round, some right jabs thrown in. But Ali's corner seemingly not happy. Let's see if we can get some words from Angelo Dundee right now. Angie, what do you think of the champ's tactics at this point? Well, I think he's, that prediction he made for five is starting to take hold of the guy. I think he's going to go all out in the fifth round. He's starting to wear the guy out and muscle him around. I think he's going to look for five. Then why have you been yelling so hard? Get to him, get to him. I, I, well, I can see him do his thing when he's got him set up, Howard. Okay, that was Angie Dundee, the trainer of Muhammad Ali. Come on. Don't take those shots for nothing. And in case there are any letter writers out there, most people in boxing call any man who's been a champion champ. We know that Joe Frazier is the heavyweight champion. But people do refer to past champions as champ. Thus in the case of Ali. So far the fight is in a pattern that is unchanging. Let's see if Foster can come to life at all. See, he's not getting through all these gloves. Static fight at this moment. The two standing in ring center. But Foster 
Well, looking more determined, trying very hard. Uh-oh, quick succession of blows against Foster. Quick reminder, folks, Monday Night Football on ABC this Monday night, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. The most impressive team in the NFL, the only unbeaten team, the Dolphins of Miami against the St. Louis Cardinals. Brilliant coach Don Shula, Mercury Morris, Larry Zonka, the whole gang in action Monday night on ABC, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. We're approaching the two-minute mark in round four. Or rather, we're approaching the end of the round in round four. And it's the same pattern. As we take a look first at the legs of the round guard girl and then at Bob Foster, Let's see if we can get Bill Cosby in here between rounds. Bill. Bill Cosby sitting this right is, behind us. This is my round, Howard. This as is, I told you before. You picked Foster to yes. knock Ali out. Yes, and already Ali has a hickey on his left eye. <laughs> he has a hickey. And he has handicapped, you see, so far. He has handicapped to make Foster look good. Uh -huh. And now's the time when the skinny mongoose from New Mexico will strike with vengeance. <laughs> like a cobra. A classic humorist is Bill Cosby. Thank you, Bill. This is the round Ali said today that he would finish off Foster. Yeah. Remains to be seen. by Foster. The first good left of the fight by Foster snapped Ali's head back. Funny, Bill Cosby has predicted that Foster would come alive in the fifth round and floor Ali. Bobby is moving that left much more crisply this round. He's only connected once. But there seems to be a new determination in him, and Ali is cut on the corner of the left eye. Ali is cut on the corner of the left eye, and blood is coming out from that one blow by Foss. Uh-oh, uh-oh, a knockdown with the right. Ali came to life when he got cut. Mandatory eight count. Ali doesn't like that a bit. You can see the blood out of the corner of his left eye. Down went Foster, first with a short left and then with a chopping right. Ali is after him now. Ali is after him now. We're a minute and a half into round five. And Foster is punching away, fighting back despite the knockdown. The crowd is coming to life. The pattern has changed in this round. This is a fighting round. And give Bob Foster credit. A lot of guts. Leary fighter. We've got a little more than a minute left in the fifth round. A weary fighter is Foster, but he has cut Ali in the eye. We've had one knockdown in the fight this round. Crowd is yelling. There's a left. Oh, he's staggering. Foster's in trouble, but fighting wildly back. A wild right there, you saw him. Down again. Foster is a weary fighter. Second knockdown in this round. Remember, three knockdowns in one round does not end the fight. We have 30 seconds left in the fifth round. The fight continues. Referee Mills Lane is not down again. Third knockdown in the round. 15 seconds, not 20 as you hear. 10 seconds left in the round. Ali trying to finish him off. This was the predicted round and down again. Fourth time down in the round. 
He is a weary man. The end of the round. Let's stay on Bob Foster. Ali was cut. He was cut by a left hook in the corner of his eye, and it stung him into action. Four knockdowns in the round. Now let's look at it again in slow motion. Watch this. Ali coming in at Foster. There's a left first and then the right. The left did the major damage, I suspect, even though at the moment of impact it seemed like the right. Foster is sitting there being worked over. First the left and then the right, and that was the first of four knockdowns. Ali directly above us. They're working on the corner of his left eye. A desperate round for Bob Foster. He got in a good left that snapped Ali's head back, landed again, and suddenly Ali was cut. After that, Ali went after him, did what you saw him do. Four knockdowns, and a weary Foster somehow survived. We're in round six now. As you can see, Ali in the white, Foster in the blue. One has to wonder about the finishing power of Ali. In terms of knocking out another that left eye, blood is still coming out of him. He could not put Foster away despite four knockdowns. They have not really patched up that eye, and Angie Dundee is one of the best in the business, together with Dr. Ferdy Pacheco, who's in Angie's corner. Billy Edwards, of course, is in Bob Foster's corner. Ali is back to the flicking jab. Moving, dancing on the toe, circling steadily to the left, occasionally balancing it off with a step or two to the right. The Ali movements that so typified him before the three and a half years of enforced idleness. But give this Bob Foster credit. Give him credit for games. 41 pounds lighter, down four times and up again to fight the sixth round. His body worn down apparently in the last round by the superior weight and strength of Ali, almost as much as by the punches, because the proof of the pudding is that Ali couldn't put him away despite four knockdowns. minute 45 seconds into the sixth round and the action has abated. That left of Foster's is getting in now. He got two in a row in there. Ali's got to keep that right up. First lesson on how to stop a left. Keep that right up. Now he's got it up. Quick left and a right in combination by Ali. Remember, this is a scheduled 12 round. A lot of blood coming out of that corner of that left eye of Ali's. It's open wide again. You see the clock running down in round six. Ali continues to score. That left counts every time he lands it. The end of round six, and we go to Ali's corner. I'm going to try to get a word in with Dr. Ferdy Pacheco as soon as I can. Discover what goes with that eye. Round seven. Worked on Ali's left eye throughout the intermission between round six and seven. Let's see what Ferdy Pacheco can tell us about that eye. Doesn't look bad, Howard. It's about uh, three quarters of an inch, not deep. But he bleeds. Uh, he's never been cut before, so he looks like he's bleeding a little bit more than usual. He has a mouse under his eye. 
Mouse under the left eye, a cut that Dr. Pacheco describes as not deep. As we try to bring you our up to the instant reporting while the fight is on from Ali's corner itself. Now in round seven. Foster, who didn't seem able to stand during the fifth round when he suffered four knockdowns, suddenly seems to have been given some kind of new life. And while Ali has jabbed all night to perfection, he has done so without apparent power. Foster is getting that left in. Now a right that was on the shoulder. He's aiming for that eye. That's Foster's hope. And the crowd is now pulling for Foster because of his courage. Look at that left getting in there now. Ali's right has dropped, enabling Foster to get that left in. We've gone a minute and 45 seconds into round seven. And the fight takes on interest. That's Drew Brown, Bundini, and the gun. Oh, there it was. The left came out of nowhere. Ali was looking for his mark. The fifth knockdown of the fight. The fifth knockdown of the fight. The fight continues. Ali's corner exhorts him to finish it. The left was what did it the last time. A good right. Ali playing his game despite the blood, pretending to stagger. Another right, again the pretension of staggering. What is there in Ali that makes him feel the need to do it? You see the clock, you see the clock counting down. Oh, another knockdown, a quick left. The sixth knockdown of Bob Foster in this fight. The clock is counting down. We are in round seven. He will not stay down. Ali cannot put him away. The bell. Let's watch this again in slow motion. The left. Foster got a left in there. The right that hurt him. And then the left. And that's what really did it there. There's your isolated camera, and you saw the left knock him down there. That was the sixth knockdown of the fight. Now, Foster actually came back from that first knockdown, got in some good blows. We continue to watch in slow motion with Drew Brown Bundini yelling from the corner. There was a right, and then the left. That again was the first knockdown in the seventh round. We're back to action, the eighth round. Ali in the white, Foster in the blue. Ali clearly dominant in the point scoring from the very beginning. But Ali with a mouse under his left eye with a thin three-quarter inch cut over his left eye. A cut that he's never suffered before in his life. Now, Foster is really weary. He went down from a quick right. He has just about had it. This is the time. He is trying to get up. He's a courageous man. But this, it seems to me, is the time to call it quits. It's over. It's over. It's a knockdown in the eighth round. A knockout in the eighth round as Muhammad Ali does away with one of the gamest men you'd want to see, but a man just too light, not strong enough to go against Ali. We'll be back to talk with both the fighters and to show you in its entirety that exciting fifth round plus the final eighth round for as long as it lasted in just one moment. Bob, I'm terribly sorry, but you certainly couldn't have fought a game of fight. No, how are y'all? I gotta give it to the guy. The guy gotta have a tremendous right hand. You can't see it coming, you know? That's one thing I don't, you know, I never get hit with the right hand, but 
My trainer warned me about the right hand, but I just couldn't see it coming. And uh, the fact is, though, that you went down seven times, and it was only final the last time. So how great could his punch be? Well, I mean, he's not that uh, great of a punch, but see what he do. You know, he can put so many together, you know, or that I rely on uh, one good shot, you know. I see. So, you know, I... But, uh, what now, know? Bob? Well, um, I'm not going to stop trying, you know. I mean, I, was, I don't feel bad, you know, because I fought a great guy, you know. And I don't feel bad at all because the guy for a heavyweight, 220 pounds, have tremendous fast hands, you know. Okay, come on in here if you will, huh? When you turn around, if you will, Muhammad. You need somebody to whip you. Yeah, I know. You agitator. I know. You talk too much. I you know. don't have a chance to back it up. I know. What do you want to say to this game, fellas? Well, I say his game. I didn't know he was that good. Thought it was a lot of talk. He took my best shots, kept getting up. He's good. He's the only man has ever cut me like he did and bruised me. Had a left jab that I couldn't seem to get away from. And he will reign a long time in his division. Well, he says he's going to keep fighting. He's so great until he's got to fight heavyweights. Light heavies just don't stand a chance. I'm afraid he may be right, Bob. Well, well, I guess I just have to keep on fighting them light heavies, you know. Thank you very much, Robert. Okay, uh, you go on inside, and good luck to you. Good luck to you, Bob. All right, Muhammad, let's turn around. Oh, we've got the handheld camera now. You said the fifth round, but you've got to give that guy credit, as you just did, for tremendous game. first prediction was eight, which is what I got him in, but I should have stuck to it. I underestimated his good greatness. I predicted five, but he did go in eight as I originally predicted, but I should, just, I should have kept eight. This was eight. the first time, Muhammad, that you ever got a cut in your eye and a mouse under it. First time as a professional, right. He had a snapping, grazing left jab. Not solid, but just slides off the size of your jaw. And this is what bruised my eye. When he did connect with you a couple of times in the sixth round, you went through your act pretending you were staggered. Why? I was staggered, but I just put emphasis on it because what you call playing possum. When you do that, it makes a man figure, well, he's not going to trick me. I'm not going to walk into nothing. And now I'd like to show you the fifth round again in its entirety with my commentary as it happened. Oh, a good left by Foster. The first good left of the fight by Foster snapped Ali's head back. Funny, Bill Cosby has predicted that Foster would come alive in the fifth round and floor Ali. Bobby is moving that left much more crisply this round. He's only connected once. But there seems to be a new determination in him, and Ali is cut on the corner of the left eye. Ali is cut on the corner of the left eye, and blood is coming out from that one blow by far. Uh-oh! Uh-oh, a knockdown with the right. Ali came to life when he got cut. Mandatory eight count. Ali doesn't like that a bit. You can see the blood out of the corner of his left eye. Down went Foster, first with a short left and then with a chopping right. Ali is after him now. Ali is after him now. We're a minute and a half into round five. And Foster is punching away, fighting back despite the knockdown. The crowd is coming to life. The pattern has changed in this round. This is a fighting round. And give Bob Foster credit. A lot of guts. Weary fighter. We've got a little more than a minute left in the fifth round. A weary fighter is Foster, but he has cut Ali in the eye. We've had one knockdown in the fight this round. Crowd is yelling. There's a left. Oh, he's staggering. Foster's in trouble, but fighting wildly back. A wild right there, you saw him. Down again. Foster is a weary fighter. Second knockdown in this round. Remember, three knockdowns in one round does not end the fight. We have 30 seconds left in the fifth round. The fight continues. Referee Mills Lane is not down again. Third knockdown in the round. Ralph, Ralph. 20 seconds, Jeff. 
15 seconds, not 20 as you hear. 10 seconds left in the round. Ali trying to finish him off. This was the predicted round and down again. Fourth time down in the round. And now the eighth round. The eighth round when it all finally ended, we're looking at it again the way it happened. Foster had been knocked down six times during the fight, but still he was up there and gamely fighting away. And Ali, who had never been cut before, was really angry over the fact that he'd been cut this time. Well, you saw that. You saw a quick left get into Foster. It was the left in the long run that undid him. But Foster went down, it seemed to me, almost as much from weariness from the superior strength of the much heavier man as he did from the final blow. And you see the referee, Mills Lane, saying that he had been counted out the end of the fight, 40 seconds into the eighth round. Ali, the winner, by a knockout. Remember to join Dandy, Frank, and myself Monday night at 9 o'clock Eastern time for NFL football as the undefeated Miami Dolphins play host to the St. Louis Cardinals. The executive producer of ABC's Wide World of Sports is Rune Olage, Ali Foster fight coverage produced by Ned Steckel, directed by Lou Volpicelli. World Ski Flying Championship produced by Doug Wilson. Production coordinator of ABC's Wide World of Sports is Dennis Lewin, program administrator John Martin, associate directors Norm Samet and Joe Assetti. In Nevada, our technical director, Bob Stodden. Next Saturday, Wide World of Sports will not be seen. In order to bring you an NCAA college football doubleheader, Army Navy followed by Notre Dame USC. ABC's Wide World of Sports will return two weeks from today with the Ladies Demolition Derby International Professional Skiing Championships along with the unusual Florida State Circus. Now this is Howard Cosell saying so long from Lake Tahoe. Air travel arranged and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines, the airline of sports champions. Today's show was pre-recorded. <laughs>